Welcome back everybody. This is Hutch from Hutch High Perf. Before we start today's video, I just uh, wanted to say that some of the information contained within is going to be disturbing to some people. So if you're a machinist or if you're really into tight specs and tolerances, today's episode may be a bit triggering for you. So I offered this as a warning before continuing. On my last video, when I went over all the parts, I talked about needing the, for, the F word crank pulley off of a 5.0 serpentine belt system. So someone mentioned to me, it's like, hey, you, you never told anybody that this thing doesn't fit right out of the box. And he's right because the opening for this is larger than the Oldsmobile balancer. So, and the bolt pattern is wrong too. So you need to, if you notice, there's extra holes drilled in here. I had to drill four extra holes. So you have, you have the Oldsmobile pulley, which precisely fits right on to the balancer the way it should be. Well, I've got to, or I've already done it. <laughs> but I had to transfer the, the bolt pattern onto this pulley and also make sure that the pulley was completely centered on the balancer. So I was trying to think of ways to do that. I saw online um, guys actually went in and welded material onto the inside of the lip and then machined out the exact size that it should be. Well, I don't have a lathe. I don't have the ability to do that. So I'm trying to think how can I accurately get these holes drilled into this pulley transferred from the Oldsmobile one. So I was, uh, was playing with a couple of different ideas. So I had some, I had some large size washers that were actually larger than either of the openings. And what I was going to do was mount it onto either the drill press or onto my drill. And then I was slowly going to uh, have a file on the end as it spun. And then just like on a lathe, turn this down to the exact size until it fit, till it fit just inside that hole. So if I had one that fit inside the, inside the, inside this pulley, and then I had one that fit inside the Olds pulley. Then if I bolted these two together with a, with a bolt running through the center, and I'd have, these are just demonstration. I'd have to use a washer with a smaller hole. That's just a, I don't want to buy a giant bolt to be able to do this. But then I could have these two bolted together, the two different sizes, and the one size would just fit into the Olds pulley. And then the second washer, which would fit into the other pulley, would would stop it from moving and then I could butt the two of them together and then I could transpose the 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 bolt holes from one to the other and drill them out and everything would be fine. So I was looking at doing that, but honestly I was uh, trying to think of something else so I didn't it, it could be done, but honestly uh, it was just going to be very time consuming and I just I was looking for a better way. So I started looking for like, there's gotta be some, something in the shop, something I just started looking around. All right, let's move this out of the way. Here's your trigger warning, boys. I was moving that can and I thought, look at that cap. Could it really be that easy? No, it couldn't be that easy, could it? So I took the F word pulley and I snugged it down onto the cap and I was like, well, that fits, that might work, but will it work with the Olds pulley? So I put the Olds pulley right on top. That snugs down too. The two of them fit tight together. <laughs> the two of them fit. 
and that solved my problem. So I just uh, I went I went uh, just clocked it over in between two of the the stock bolt holes for the serpentine pulley, and I marked my holes and went to the drill press and I drilled them out. So the the difference between the Olds pulley and the F word pulley is somewhere around sixty five to seventy thousandths. So I drilled everything out. And if I put it onto my balancer, now my holes line up. And I actually had an old uh, feeler gauge used for um, like old points. So they were really, they were little tiny things. And I'm able to, to get it inside here. And I checked all the way around and it's, it's 32 thousandths the whole way around. It might be a little snug on one and, and a little loose on the other, but there's also a little bit of wiggle room even with the bolts in. So I think I can put something in to space it out so it's perfect bolted down and it should be good. That's what I did. Is it accurate? It's, it's, it's there. It's in the ballpark, right? So that's my solution. Make a comment, do what you want, but I figured I would come back at least and tell you, hey, not everything is, I mean, er, nothing's bolt in, right? I mean, if you work in this hobby, nothing except like for a manufactured stock OEM part, and even that doesn't always work out, nothing is, is foolproof bolt on. You're going to have to modify in some way or another. This is the part that needed the most modification out of everything with uh, doing the serpentine uh, conversion. I mean, the, the guy sold the brackets, those bolt right on, and then the, the factory brackets bolt to that, and then all the components bolt to the factory bracket. So this is the only thing that really needed to be modified past normal. Anyway, that is it. I hope you survived, <laughs> but I just wanted to give this update real quick because uh, someone did mention it, and I was like, well, I did forget to say that you can't just bolt the thing on. You're going to have to modify it. So here it is. And that's all I got. All right. Well, that's it for this video. It's a short one. I just wanted to update uh, what you needed to do for the crank pulley in order to make it fit. Um, I usually like to be as precise as I can. But when you don't have the precision tools to be able to do that, and I just don't want to pay for someone else to do it, you have to be inventive. And this was my solution to a problem, and it worked out, I think, fine. As far as I can tell, <laughs> it looked good. We'll see when it goes on the car, right? But for now, uh, I, th I think that worked out well. <laughs> and I just uh, I used what I had in front of me. Anyway, you could do the washer method and, uh, and file it down, and you could probably be very precise. I just uh, I found an alternative that wasn't going to cause me uh, a bunch of time loss and working in the heat and, and constantly filing and then checking and filing and checking. And I just, well, <laughs> it just wasn't up for doing that. Anyway, that's all I have. Appreciate you being here time after time. Um, appreciate the comments. I'm getting a lot of nice comments from you guys uh, over a long period of time on a, quite a few different videos. The rebuild videos, especially, it seems like a lot of guys are chiming in on that and I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I'm loving the feedback. So. If you got something to say, say it. I'm a big boy. Let me know. But until next time, this is Hutch from Hutch High Perf. You know what to do. Click subscribe, like, all those things. Leave a comment. Hit the bell notification. Go to the t-shirt shop. Find something you like. Money goes back into the project. Everyone's happy. All right. That's all I got. See you next time.